Hi everybody, I'm Paul Clerken. I'm a deep sea shark taxonomist. I've traveled um, in the Pacific, the Atlantic, and the Indian Ocean studying deep sea sharks. And the title of my talk is A Picture's Worth a Thousand Words because I think despite all the work I've done, the most important thing we can do is to get observers and factory workers to document sharks with cameras and start a pipeline of data from the deep sea to researchers and policymakers. So I've worked on a bunch of boats, and this is pretty much what you're dealing with. Um, you know, whether it's a long line or a trawler, you have a bunch of fish with uh, sharks mixed in there. So you pick them off, uh, sometimes on a sorting table or belt, and then you have to go through all these sharks. Um, there are actually even more sharks in the factory, um, and this came up in a single tow. And this took me 18 hours to sort through them, identify them, and take the biological data. And that's too much to ask from uh, an observer. And this is reflected in some of the data that we get. When I've double-checked observers' uh, work, they can misidentify up to two-thirds of all the sharks. And this is pretty understandable. Shark taxonomy is hard. You can see right here, this is actually all one species, even though it looks different and has four color morphs. And this is four different species. Um, so this by itself is already pretty confusing. These are a bunch of lantern sharks, and they're all different species. Um, and so you can see uh, it's hard to tell them apart, plus most of these are new species. So even if you could tell them apart, you wouldn't even know what to call them. And this is pretty common. Um, here are some sharks that came up in the same tow, and it's six different species. They look alike, and they're all new to science. So what have we done in the past? We've tried to um, give observers uh, guides, and, and it's kind of hard. Taxonomy is difficult, and that's because um, Taxonomy is sometimes uh, outdated, and a lot of the manuals are written by taxonomists for taxonomists, uh, and they make them too verbose. So when you're in the factory, there's just too much writing, and it almost forces the observers to flip through them and look for pictures. And this is not good because they skip all the steps to, to key out the shark. Also, a lot of the time, um, taxonomy is written in terms of morphometric measurements. That, that's kind of the language of taxonomy. Um, and this shark is, is kind of described as having um, a long snout, and this one is described as having a longer snout than this one. And that's not very helpful unless you have both the sharks in your hand. Um, you can measure the neck, uh, the top of the head here, and, and um, get a snout to head ratio. But th then you're taking multiple measurements and calculating, and that's, that's just not going to happen in the factory. So that's why taxon taxonomy is hard, but why is it important? Uh, and that's because all the stuff that we need um, to estimate life history, uh, sex ratios, um, length distributions, um, uh, fecundity, maturity, all that stuff uh, that we need for conservation, um, it's, it's all species specific. So if you don't identify the shark to the right species, not only is that data useless, but it can actually be harmful um, if you try to use the wrong shark to estimate um, life history. So an example of this is uh, the Squalus acanthus and Suckleyi. The, these sharks used to be um, identified as the same, we just thought they were the same shark, and they were managed um, as the same species. But uh, they've done more work and they found out that acanthus, uh, the females mature at 12 years old and they have up to 25 pups and Suckleyi, um, the females mature at 35 and a half years old and they have no more than 17 pups so obviously these species have to be managed separately. So our system is obviously um, currently flawed. Um, even though we have uh, observers going out on some deep sea fishing vessels, not enough data is making it back to researchers and policymakers. But what if we could send observers out with a tablet that identified the sharks for them. Um, and not only guided data collection, making it faster and easier, but also recorded the data and then transmitted this data so that it was readily available to researchers and stakeholders who could um, update the protocol as they needed new data. Uh, and we believe this is possible um, with a technological solution combining taxonomy, genetics, um, information management systems, and AI. So uh, we have different phases. Phase three right here, this is the, the tablet that will help us with everything. But to get there, we have to go through uh, two other phases, uh, taxonomy, cataloging all the species, and um, uh, electronic key and management system. And then we can actually go past that to a shark shoot that could collect data from sharks as they're being discarded. 
So phase one is very basic. It's, um, it's going to be the most important phase, and it's also going to be the most uh, time-consuming phase. But it's actually not much different than what ships are already doing. Um, it just involves a tentative ID, um, some kind of hull information, location stuff, depth, and whatever life history information that the, uh, the observers are already taking, um, sex, length, maturity. Um, we are, on top of that, going to ask for a suite of photos, which most, um, most boats are already doing, and um, a genetic sample and the occasional specimen if it's a new species. So this is very low-tech, it's cheap, it's going to be minimal time uh, and also minimal training, but it's going to be the first step um, towards cataloging the species that are in our deep sea and training the AI. So the photographs, um, are, they're going to be needed for identifying the species um, and also for training the AI. So we're going to need a suite, uh, mostly full shots. So um, full top, full side, and full bottom of the shark. Um, and some shots of the head and the dorsal fins would be helpful. So for the full side, we just need the whole shark from the tip of the snout to the tail uh, with some size references in there, uh, usually just a, a fish board, a, a meter stick. Um, these ones where the shot, shots are not straight on are kind of complicated. The, it's really hard to identify a shark from a picture like this. Um, these might be helpful for training AI later on, but right now we're just asking for these straight on shots. Um, and then shots of the head, side, top, bottom, where we can see the teeth. And then um, of the paired fins, where they're both in the same picture. For these we're going to need um, one shark per photo, uh, a size reference, um, a color chart, and then um, something in the photograph to identify the, the specimen, usually a hull number um, and a vial number if there is one. We can use cheap standardized cameras and use a standardized labeling system. The genetics are going to be very important for identifying the sharks and also uh, teasing out how many are new species. We anticipate there's probably a lot. Uh, and it's not going to take that long. We have these um, these genetic guns and you just kind of pull the trigger and that pushes the blade through the shark's fin and through the cap of the vial and then the blade actually pops off their one time use it will pop off in the vial and a new cap is put on so because of this there's no sanitation or cleanup required it's going to be very fast uh, they're also pre-labeled so you can just take a photograph of the label and that can be scanned into the data so that's step one it's um, it's going to be the most important um, and it's also going to be very quick to start up. Uh, it can be done with the distribution of some protocols and training videos, and it could happen pretty quick for very cheap. Phase two is going to um, make species identification quicker, and it's also going to manage the data faster with an information management system. So the first part is uh, an electronic key, or e-key as I've been calling it, and this will give the observers uh, a number of characters um, uh, some of them with photographs that they can pick through. So it'll be um, kind of like a key that they can just touch screen um, on a waterproof touch screen tablet. Um, and this will, will give them um, pliable answers with, uh, you know, maybes or onsure, and that way that they never actually reach, um, you know, a wall where they don't know what to do. That can redirect them to a definitions page or a series of pictures or just more uh, instructions just like bag it and tag it in case it's a new species. Um, so this will go to the end where they get a uh, confirmation image of the shark and then they can confirm or, uh, or uh, you know, say that's not the shark that they're looking at. And then um, it will uh, put in the, the species name into uh, the database and then they can start collecting data. Uh, and this will guide them through species specific data. So we have a shark like this, which is very common. This is probably the most common shark we have out there and we don't need really that much data from it. We can do with just number of males and number of females. This shark is rare um, and uncommon. We'd probably ask for a fin clip and uh, bag and tag the specimen. So because they'll be spending less time on uh, the species that we know a lot about, they can spend more time collecting from the, uh, the data deficient species and we'll get more data for less time. Um, so the data coming in will be organized. It will all be, you know, in the same spreadsheet. It will be standardized. You know, everyone can be using meters instead of uh, or millimeters instead of centimeters. And um, because it's so standardized, it will be easy uh, to analyze and quickly uh, utilized. Step three is uh, creating the AI. Um, so this will automatically identify the shark using an onboard camera on the tablet. Um, it will uh, fill in the species name, it will automatically label the photos, um, and it can also take basic 
uh, information such as sex and length. Um, and then it would uh, guide the, the observer to take further um, data measurements and, um, and samples. This is expandable with other wireless devices that can be Bluetooth sunk to a, a scale or calipers or a fishboard if we want to take more data. And because we'll be taking fewer images, um, everything can be uploaded via Wi-Fi once it has a Wi-Fi connection. So this will be highly automated um, and it will be efficient. There will be uh, less of a chance of human error. Um, and the data will go straight to uh, researchers and policymakers. Um, and Fish AI has been around for a while. I actually have three apps downloaded on my phone. Uh, the reason it hasn't really developed for the deep sea is because there's this lack of photographs and, and data to go with them. Um, so uh, from the first two phases, we'll have a lot of photographs that we'll have to ID anyway to be able to use that data for life history. Um, and then we can use that to, uh, to educate um, an AI model that's already been trained to identify fish. We can transfer learn. Um, these sharks. The next step would be to create a shark chute that could identify and catalog data from sharks as they were being discarded. This could be done adjacent to the AI tablet so observers could t continue to um, collect more high resolution data and samples and the chute could be used for live sharks to minimize the amount of time that they spend out of the water. Uh, this photo might look um, familiar to Suzanne Romain. Um, she's been working with NOAA to create this uh, electronic monitoring um, system. And that's pretty much it. We could start this uh, with phase one right away, which is going to be low tech, just taking images and genetics um, from uh, commercial fishing boats. We've done this in the past with Sea Lord, and we've got a lot of new species, and it's been a successful project. Uh, and that would go straight into phase two, which is using the E key on the tablet to collect more data. And then phase three would be the AI tablet. And we'd get a lot more data with a lot less time, um, and we could take a census of sharks, which we could pair with developing technologies such as environmental DNA or eDNA. Um, all this technology already exists, it just hasn't really been put together or tailored towards uh, deep sea sharks. I'm happy to take any questions.